Okay, today is 14.2. I would like you to find that because if nothing else, I'm going to be assigning you the lab today, and I'd like you to take a look at that lab that's in 14.2. Eventually, we'll pull that out, make it its own file, throw it in the labs folder that we have on the, on the site. But for right now, it's in 14.2. See if you can find that. Okay, within 14.2, uh, I am going to teach you... Uh, I'm going to use a few of those slides. I'm going to teach you some stuff. But for right now, I'd like you to do some review. These are some data points. At 0.2 seconds, the water was 8 feet up the pole. Then at 0.8 seconds, it, the water had receded down to 6 feet. It's because it was a wave that was passing on this dock pole, the pole holding up the dock. And then by 1.3 seconds, it was only four feet up the pole, and that was the lowest it ever got. Okay, eight foot was the highest it got. Four feet was the lowest it got. You know the time between the two? So you should be able to write a sinusoidal for that. I strongly encourage you to make a sketch like this, where you go, okay, I think my, low, my high spot's here and my low spot's here, and you label them and you find that line between them and stuff. A picture's worth a thousand words. I really think it would help you a lot. Then, once you're done with that, make me a good quality graph. I'd like you to actually use graph paper. You can do add graph paper, you know, to your file from in, in uh, Notability. And do a high quality graph of negative 2 cosine of 4x minus pi minus 1. Okay. Those are your two problems to start the hour with. And again, this top one just needs an equation like y equals 3 cosine of 2 pi over 7 times x minus uh, 1.4 plus 3. That's totally not the right answer, but it'll look kind of like that. All right. See if you can do those first two questions. It's going to take you a little while. I'll pause while you work on that. Here's what you should be thinking. I need to know a low spot and a high spot. This one isn't the low spot or a high spot. I don't need it. I'm not even going to use it. Okay. I'm going to make a quick sketch. Really, making a sketch helps you. At 0.2 seconds, which is a little bit after zero, right? And you can decide how far that is. Is eight feet. You can decide how high that is. But there's a dot there. Then, could you get the door for us, sir? Thank you. Uh, then the next one's at 1 1.3, and it's a low spot at 4, half as high as the other one was. I hope you then kind of started to say, okay, so I'm going to make one of these for that, and then there's a dotted line that runs through here, and then exactly between 4 and 8 is 6, of course. And so that answers a lot of things. How many of you actually had a sketch with a dotted line at 6? If you didn't get that far, you should have. It would have helped. Maybe you'll still get it right anyway, but it would have helped. Y equals, this is the amplitude of the distance from the 6 to the 8, which is a 2. And then it's cosine. And then it's, oh, this next part is a little bit icky. This next part is B, and I don't know what B is. So I go back to my formulas and I say period is 2 pi over B, which means B is 2 pi over the period. How many of you have that written somewhere on your page? That should have been there. If you didn't have that, you should write it down. Because seriously, you're missing out because the hardest part of the test will involve the period changes. Okay, so then how do I figure out the period for this one? Well, is it a completely full done cycle to go from there to there? Nope. From a low to a high would not be. What about from a high to a high? Yes, so I could keep going until I hit the next high, and that would be double this length. Well, how far was it? This was 1.1. How do I know? That minus that. And I double it, makes it 2.2. So is the period, sorry, is the number I put in right here 2.2? No. You have to put it into your little formulas. That's why we need the formulas. So the period is 2.2. And B is 2.2, sorry, 2 pi over 2.2. If I put in 2.2 here, it doesn't really help me as much. So I like this formula better for this particular application. So B is 2 pi over 2.2. Then I have my x minus, how far did it shift? And I'll tell you that in a second. And the last is the easy part. How far? Up, up 6. So how about this shift here? 
Do you remember me telling you that it's the x of the high point? So the high point was right here, and it happened at 0.2 seconds. I guess that should be a little further to the left, but anyway, the high point happened at 0.2 seconds. So you put a 0.2 right there. True or false? How many of you had a 0.2 right there? Okay, good. It's true. Now tell me, is there another high point somewhere else? Would that have worked also? Yes, it would have. Because you could also shift it a full period over, which is how far? 2.2 further. So instead of 0.2, I could have added 2.2 to that, and I'd have 2.4. Did anybody put a 2.4 in there? Because I would have to give you credit for that. All right, that would work. But the simplest thing is to just take the x value of the high point, and that's right there. And that goes all right there. Okay, good. So if you got that, that's some of the toughest stuff. Now, what if we change that to a real-world problem about the tide? And I had you look up some tides in the low tide and the high tide. Do you get that it's basically giving you these points, except you're going to find them on a chart in the real world? To give you the time that it hit the low tide and the time it hit the high tide. What if the time was 4.4? Actually, they'll, it would actually be a real time. So it might be like 4.40 a.m. It hit a high tide of 18 feet above sea, le above sea level. That's how they always do their tides, is above or below sea level. And then they say at about, let's say, six hours later, at 10.40, it had a low tide of negative three. What the heck does that mean? Three feet below sea level. Sea level is this imaginary place that's where the sea almost never is because it's going up and down based on tides, right? Okay, so anyway, at that moment, it's at a low tide. It's a high. If there was only, I spelled high wrong, um, if there was only a low, one low and one high tide, it would be very simple. But in the real world, the numbers are, it's not quite that simple. I'm going to ask you to do two of them. So let's say the next high tide came around at, by the way, you use military time. I want to have an 80 in there for sure, though. Let's say it's 1620. Okay, do you get that that means you take away 12 from it, and it would be like 420 in the afternoon? Okay. And let's say by then it goes back up to a high tide, but this time it's at 19 feet. What? That messes things up, doesn't it? It would be nice if the high tide was always at 18 feet and the low tide was always at, you know, three below. But And in some places, it's actually very close. But in other places, the high tides and the low tides are, are, are like off from day to day to day. You just never know if it's going to be a really, really high, high tide or if it's going to be a really low, low tide. So apparently what happens is there is, in the real world, there can be uh, like a cosine function for it, but then... For the cycles within the cycles, like why is it a little lower this time or a little higher next time, there's actually a trig function inside the trig function. We're not going to make you get that complicated. So all we're going to ask you to do is find two highs and two lows. This is what I'm doing for my kids anyways. What if this one rotates past 24 hours? Let's say it's at 04. Do you get that that means to keep my times consistent? That would be kind of like saying it would be at 24.04. You see what I mean? Because it's the next day. All right, so then how much time between here and here? How much time between here and here? How much time between here and here? And they, hopefully the times are, again, pretty similar. But we're going to keep it simple. If this is a 19 high and this is an 18 high, we're just going to average them and say that the high tide was 18.5 feet. Okay? You're going to get me real-world data on two highs and two lows. And let's say the low tide here was actually at zero. And you'd average the two lows. And that would average to a what? A negative 1.5. Okay? Then the time, you can just use your the time between your first two as your time element. Do you get that that is not a full period? Going from 
a high tide to a low tide does not make a full period. Okay, so you can then write a sinusoidal for it. Only thing that's going to be different than normal is I would just give you one low and one high. It was simple. Now you have two lows and two highs. You just got to average them. Okay, and I want it to be real. So there is a spot on the sixth page of the notes for today, which I'm going to see if I can find. I'll pause while I try to find that. So in your notes on the PDF, the as long as the links are set up, which I think they are, you should be able to just touch Tide website and should actually bring you to this Tide website. You have to hit which? The globe. Okay, so you guys have a little globe on your screen. Touch that and it'll bring you here. Okay, now I don't want to crimp your style by saying you have to go to the place that I was interested in going. But I'm going to go to the Upper East Coast and I am going to go to a place called Coffin Point, Maine. Seemed like a pretty cool one to me. So I am going Upper East Coast, Coffin Point, Maine. I'm going to drag this thing down so like everybody can see it at home that's looking here. And here are hmm, okay, good enough. Here are some uh, low and high tides. So you might have taken down this one and this one. And is that good enough? No, we just want to add a little bit of real world complication to this. We'd like you to take a high and a low and then average it with the next low and the next high. And then you can use the first two times, the time between the first two, as your time between the low and the high. But just average your lows and average your highs. And then you're going to tell me where you were. I was in Coffin Point, Maine. You can be wherever you want. And you're going to take your data, and then you're going to do this in that same format for all labs. It's worth 20 points. I think you know the deal by now, right? You know where that is? It's in the labs folder. So the goal of this is to write sinusoidal equation for the tide at my in, you know, at a place of your choosing, using the data off this website provided. Okay, and you're, I'm choosing Coffin Point, Maine. You could pick whatever you want. You just have to be able to. Uh, we have to be able to look it up. So whoever's grading it is going to go to Coffin Point, Maine, and look at the dates and times you said, and see if you actually wrote down the right data. If they can't find it, you'll lose points. So we got to know where did your actual data come from. Then we'll see if you averaged your numbers right. Then we'll see if you actually wrote the equation for the sinusoidal right, which will be basically you'll have to figure out its period, like how, how long between things, you know, below, between lows and highs, and is it a low to a low did you check, or maybe you check a low to a high? Yes? Uh, if there are low, can we have to uh, average all of the highs, lows, and then put on the page? No. You, uh, what I'm asking you to do is a modification to the directions on the lab. I'm, the directions for the lab are just what I'm telling you right now. What I told you to do is find two lows and two highs that are all right next to each other, and we'll just average them, keep it simple. So in this case, the low tide was at negative 0.48 feet, negative half a foot, and the next low tide was at negative 0.68 feet, pretty dang close to each other. You'll find other locations are quite different. They can be very different, and it all has to do with the geography of that area. If it's like a, like a, imagine for a moment the tide flowing into a bay where it's got a, like a choke point like this. And here's the water like rushing in to the bay. At high tide, there can be a huge force of water. All that water that's supposed to be in that bay is all stuck out in the ocean. It's trying to get in there. And there'll be a huge surge, super fast current flowing in because of the tide. And then and on the other end, when the water's trying to flow out, it switches. And all of a sudden, it starts to flow that way really fast. Now, in other places, do you get, if there is no like inlet like that, let's say this is just like a big rock wall. And here's the ocean flowing up to it. And it's just a big, huge rock wall for miles and miles and miles. And when the tide comes up, it just goes up the wall and just a little higher than it was. It's much more simple. Uh, and it's a simpler and much less likely to be a huge variation of low to high tides. Does that make sense? If there's geography that's affecting the tides, like that, some of the bays you'll check will be like, whoa, the low tide was way different this time than next time. We'll average it. Yes? Like in this example, you would use... Um, the four things that I circled you would use. And you would also need the times that they have. 
you would need all the times that they happened just to write them down in your chart. But when you're actually when you're actually doing your final calculation, you would know you would use these two times, the times between the first two, and you'll use the average low tide that happened and the average high tide that happened. Okay, and the time time between them. If I had it to do over again, but I've already explained it to the other hour. If I had it to do over again, I would have figured out the average time between them two. But don't do that. Just find, just use the first two times you come across as your time between intervals, between low and high tide. Okay. All right. This kind of is it's good that you see the real world is messy. The real world doesn't just have like high tides always at 15 feet above sea level. It's it's messier than that. Your lab is due on Monday. This Friday is the test. Test is going to be Friday. Okay, so that means I teach you one new thing today. Tomorrow's pretty much a review day, and then the test. Okay? All right, we did some review already today, though. I hope you noticed that. I do need to finish off that question that I was uh, doing on this page. And... Here's the cosine graph. Would you agree that cosine starts out? Hey, this is so messy. I'm just going to make a neat, clean one here. Cosine generally starts out looking like this high spot at one. Then I usually make four marks on the line. This is two pi. This is pi. And cosine goes down and comes back up again. Is that how you started? Good. Now, Relabel this instead of 1 and negative 1 to 2 and negative 2. Why did I do that? Because it's been stretched with a 2 there. Raise your hand if you had that part right. Well, think of this as like multiple little parts to the problem. Okay, how many of you remembered to do the negative and therefore flip it? Raise your hand if you did that. Okay, good. That means that it basically would go like that. Okay. Then, next thing is this minus 1. It actually doesn't have to be in this order. In fact, Probably shouldn't be in this order, but I'll just tell you, it needs to get budged down one. So my dotted line here, I'm moving it down one. Okay. Now, I also need to renumber it and shift it a little bit. So I do this factoring part. Four comes out, x minus pi over four. Hear me. This is important. Do I shift it first or do I renumber it first? You renumber it first because it matters. Because right now, how far is pi over 4? Right this second, I haven't renumbered yet, and pi over 4 would be right here. And that would mean this is how far pi over 4 is. But it won't be that far in a second once I'm done renumbering. How do, what do you mean renumbering? This 4 is going to give me a new period. What are the two equations for this? Period equals what? 2 pi over b. And what's the other one? b equals 2 pi over period. Okay, what's the period for this guy? Or did they tell me a b? They told me the b. b is 4. So I'm sticking a 4 in. 4 goes here, 4 goes here. This one's more useful this time. The period is 2 pi over 4. So uh, my period was 2 pi. Notice I'm going to change it to 2 pi over 4. What did I do to that number? Divided by 4. Therefore, I'm going to divide this one by 4. There, I've got my thing renumbered. So now it's finishing earlier, a lot earlier. Instead of taking 2 pi to finish, it's finishing up in only 2 pi over 4, which is half of a pi. So now the distance I'm supposed to shift it has changed. It used to be this long. Do you get that now the distance I need to shift it is that far okay so you got to renumber it first then you actually shift it how far do i shift it right pi over four so i got to go to the right everything moves to the right that far okay so i'm going to get this out of the way here and i'm going to grab the dotted red one which is the actual one now move it right pi over four there we go may not be perfect but it's pretty close and that's what it should have looked like. Raise your hand if yours was perfect. Just as, as perfect as mine was. 
Okay, good. If you didn't understand that, that's, again, I'm working through these because these are reasonable problems that you'd be expected to do. Sir. But do you see that, that here, I'm going to draw you a straight line in here. Two is there. Do you get mine is below two? So if you wanted me to renumber it, I wouldn't actually move that two. The two's in the right spot. But the new height of it, you could put a one here if you want to. And then as, how, how, as far as how low it was, it used to be too low, but now it's down another one. So now it would be negative threes down here. It's not like, it's just important to clarify that it doesn't need to move the negative two. It's just that it's lower now than it used to be. So, all right. Any other questions? Okay. Now let's uh, do uh, uh, one more graph because we haven't done tangent in a while. Why don't you try this? Three tan of two theta. Graph that one for me. In case you, you've forgotten tangent's parent, I want everybody to sketch the parent of tangent real quick. And then I'm going to tell you in case that for those that are forgotten or are stuck, because if you don't know the parent, you can't possibly do the problem. Pause We try to remember that. Awesome. A pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. It's got asymptotes. And then on the inside here, that's what tangent looks like. All right. So this is going to repeat over and over again. Do I need to like keep making a lot of them? No. How far is it between asymptotes? Pi. That's normal. That's the parent one. Does this one that I asked you to graph have a normal period? No. So now we got to change some stuff. In the old days, halfway across here was 1 and negative 1. Would you agree that that's changed now? Now it's 3 and negative 3. Raise your hand if you had that part right. Okay, good. Then this 2. I have two formulas for that. Period, 2 pi over b, and b equals 2 pi over period. Did they give me the b, or did they give me the period? The b. The b is 2, so therefore I can put it in here and here. And which one helps me more? That one. Period is 2 pi over 2. So the period is pi. That means it's pi in between the asymptotes. Okay? You with me so far? Yes? What did I say it was? Well, 2 pi over 2 is pi. Didn't I simplify it? I thought I was simplifying. Oh, oh, you're saying I'm using the wrong period for tangent. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. This formula that I said was 2 pi over 2, oh, thanks for catching me, is pi over 2. Very easy mistake to make. Okay. So that's pi over the period. Okay, sorry about that. So then when I divide by 2 here, here, I should actually just start over again. Pi over b. This is what the formula should have been. And why isn't it 2 pi? I swear it was 2 pi before. Because now we're doing tangent. Tangent has a different period. Okay, so then I'm going to solve this for b. And then I was told B, B was 2. So I'm going to put a 2 in right here and here. And this one helps me more. And the period is pi over 2. Thank you for fixing that. So again, this distance between these is pi over 2. So then that means from here to here would be pi over 4. And this would be negative pi over 4. Okay. And then do I... I've changed my period. I've changed my numbering accordingly. Is there anything else that I'd need to have to do on this function? So here's how I would check myself. It's really smart to make, you know, you only have a few precious questions to give your grade on this. So look back through it and make sure you did everything. Did I do this three right there? 
Yeah, that's this part. Did I do the two part? Oh, that was the renumbering of it. Was there any shift? Right or left or up or down? Nope, no shifts. If I had said minus one or something, I'd have to shift the whole thing down one right now, but I don't have that, so I'm good. That's it. Okay, now let's talk about one of those slides in today's lesson. I'm going to pause and show you which one. Okay, it's this one. So, if you're just moving your hand back and forth uh, in front of your face, like, just to clarify, we are not swinging our finger in a circle around in front of us. That's different. We're just moving our finger back and forth. It's kind of like you're, you know, like you're waving your finger at somebody like, you shouldn't have done that. Anyway, so it's just going from away from your nose to closer to your nose to away from your nose to closer to your nose. Okay, so I want you to just play along. Put your finger, put your finger up. Don't actually touch your nose. The closest we're going to get is one inch from your nose. And then go up away from your nose about, we're just going to say, a total of a swing of 12 inches. So in other words, you'll be 13 inches from your nose when you stop. And then go back and then go forward. Okay, do you get, if you go like that, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, that's kind of like a sine wave. Except watch when I move it down in front of me that like this. And then it's not a sine wave yet, but what if I go up and down like this and I'm walking to the side? Do you see what happens? You get the sine wave. All right. This is like a simple sine wave, just back and forth in front of your nose. Okay. So let's say that it is from here to here, it is one inch away from your nose when we stop here. This is at one inch. And then when we stop out on the other end, we're at 13 inches from the nose. What's the amplitude? Simple answer is 12 and it's wrong. What's the amplitude? Yeah, because the difference between, think of this as like the low spot and the high spot. It's like, like if something was uh, going up and down, like the wave is going up and down, this is like the highest the wave went, and this is like the lowest the wave went here, like only one inch versus th 13 inches high. It's like a high tide and a low tide. It's what's exactly in between is where you put that dotted line. So you take the 13 and the 1, and you'd add them together and divide by 2. So that's going to add together to be 14, divide by 2 is 7. Do you get there to be a dotted line at 7? Does that make sense to you? Well, it's 13 in inches from your nose, and it's 1 inch from your nose. That makes 14 to total when you add them together, and then divide by 2 would be 7. Isn't it 7? I think it's 7. So if you mean how many inches from your face? Is it from your face or from the starting? Everything I've done so far is how many inches from your face. So I'm saying it's 7 inches from your face. If you mean six inches to here, that'd be good. But your finger would be at seven inches from your face is where the dotted line is. Okay, yes? From your nose. From your nose. Okay. Okay, let me, let me do it this way. Would you agree if I just put your nose down on the ground here? Okay, here's your nose. This is the part you sniff from. Okay. So this is one inch. Okay. Uh, and this is 13 inches. One inch, 13 inch from the nose. Okay. Would you agree that the distance between these two is 12 inches? Are you agree with me on that? Okay. So then half of that is what? Six. So I know some people are saying, shouldn't the answer be six? But it's six inches from the one inch. This, this from here to here is six. But you, then you have to add this in. The extra inch there makes this seven inches from the nose. Okay? All right. So now, write me a sinusoidal for it. I'll pause for a second while you give this a try. Okay, given how much time we have left in class, I better get to the answer here. Uh, the 
a part of this answer, the, the amplitude, is how far it is from the middle line, this middle line here, to the top. And that's from the 7 to the 13, uh, and that is how far? 6. That makes sense. It's 6 inches because the total distance here is 12 inches that we were swinging, so to speak. Okay, so then it's 6 cosine of, this next part is the B. The B is tricky. you got to write out the formula. Period is 2 pi over B. Is it really 2 pi? Yeah, we're using cosine, so it's 2 pi. Okay, so 2 pi over B, and, or I could write it as B is equal to 2 pi over the period. We need to know the period. Well, the period, I never told you this. You wouldn't be able to tell the period, but I'll tell you that, would you agree that it's a reasonable amount of time that takes about one second to go forward and back? A complete cycle. Out and back. That's a complete cycle, right? We'll say that that takes one second. That would mean your period is one second. And therefore, B is 2 pi over 1. And therefore, B would be 2 pi. Now we have X minus, and then what's the shift? Okay. How far were we shifted up? That's a different shift. That's the end one. That's the easy one. We were shifted up. How far from the nose? Seven. Okay, that's the center, the dotted line up the middle. This dotted line, that's just this line here. Okay, and then how about the shift? It's the time when it reached the highest, or in this case, the furthest from the nose. At what time would it have reached the furthest from the nose? Yes, a half of a second. You got it. Remember how it's the X, which is in this case the time of the first peak? The peak was the highest it was. All right, that's a good example problem. Now, stop. I know this is going to be depressing, but I have a couple problems for you for homework, which, believe me, you will be happy they are these problems and not the problems that were originally assigned. This is your homework. Write it down. You'll need a second to write. I apologize, but... but you can take a picture of it if you want to. Okay. This is your homework. I'm expecting it done tomorrow. You may want to walk up here if you want to. This is a flash from the past. It is circle trig. And yes, there'll be a little bit of circle trig on this next test. Here is a low and a high, and you write an equation for it. And this is just graph it. And you can always watch the video if you missed that. It's in the last few seconds of this video. You fast forward to the end. That's all I got for you for today. Okay, I had a kid ask a question about this last one. It's sine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2. And I want to know theta. And I gave you this hint that theta is between 0 and 2 pi, which means usually there's two answers, two angles, that would make that work. Okay, now that's really all I have for you for today.